Good morning, YouTube. We're here at Authentic Details again because we're kicking off a new project. I'm calling it the Project 458 Restoration. If you didn't know, my car already has over 32,000 miles. Yes, I drove this thing well over 17,000 miles in 2019, and I'm planning on doing some more rallies. We did a lot of rallies, a lot of road trips. We're gonna be doing some more rallies this year. If you're gonna take these sort of cars on a rally, they're gonna get beat up, they're gonna get rock chips, unless you protect them correctly. That's what this is all about. We're gonna restore this thing's paint, the wheels, everything. This thing's gonna look as close to new as possible. Probably actually better than new. Let's get Brad from Authentic Details in here and he can explain the rest of it for you. So are you recording all of the nefarious activities? So this is Brad from Authentic Details. So he's gonna tell you about what we're gonna be doing to this car to make it look beautiful again. Oh, me? Yeah. Sorry. Too quick. <laughs> Hey guys, uh, I'm so excited about this project. Um, I've got the team here very, very stoked about doing all the work that we're gonna do on this Ferrari. Uh, so as Dan mentioned, we're pretty much doing a micro restoration on this vehicle. First thing that we're gonna attack is the, uh, the PPF on the nose. So the entire front of the car has film on it currently. Uh, the rockers have film on it as well. We're gonna peel all that off and just assess the paint um, as it stands right now. We see a couple of penetrations in the film that may have gone through. We're not too sure. Once we take the film off, we'll identify those. Uh, we do fill in the chips when we see those, you know, polish them over and smooth them to where they look as close to the paint as we can get them. But Dan is also interested in making sure that we refine the rest of the vehicle. So the, the rest of the car is exposed paint and it's pretty swirled up. So we're gonna basically finish that down to make it as close to perfect as we can. With one thing in mind, we are gonna focus on preservation because Dan wants to have this car a very long time. We'll actually educate you on what to look for whenever you're getting paint correction on your vehicle. Um, clear coat preservation is key. So we may do one to two stages of polishing on this car to get the paint looking as good as we can. And then Dan's so excited about the PPF that he's actually opted to pay us to do the rest of the vehicle. Once we're done with that, we'll coat everything so that you've got a nice ceramic coating on the outside for easy maintenance. So that takes care of the paint. Uh, we're actually gonna pull the wheels off and send those off to get refinished. Uh, and then once they're off, we're actually gonna take some time to clean everything up under the wheel well. So we'll clean the shocks, springs, uh, brake lines, brake calipers, prep all those, install a coating so that those stay cleaner longer whenever Dan does spend time washing his vehicle. He's gonna notice that the calipers are gonna be really easy to clean. When the wheels come back from being refinished, we're gonna have new tires installed. I think uh, we're gonna have tread connection come out and do that, and then we'll coat the wheels as well so they'll be really easy to maintain. Uh, moving to the engine bay, we're actually going to clean the entire engine bay. We're going to steam clean all the cracks and crevices, rejuvenate all the plastics and rubbers and underneath the hood, and then we'll coat all of the painted products, including all the carbon fiber, which we'll polish before we coat as well. So Dan will have a really easy time keeping that engine bay clean. I mean, these Ferraris are notorious for having the underside of the back glass get a lot of water splashing up. We're going to coat the underside of that as well, so it'll make it really easy for Dan. If he does have water pop onto that glass, it'll be really easy to keep clean. We are going to polish the tail lights so that we'll make the uh, the plastics look really nice and, and crystal clear and brand new again. Uh, the interior, we're going to do a full detail on this. I noticed Dan's leather, he has the, the red Daytona seats. There is a lot of dirt and contamination in the leather, so we're going to pull that dirt and contamination out and uh, put a new leather conditioner on the leather, clean the carpets, clean all the cracks and crevices out, so we'll get that interior looking as, as close to new as we can. We'll focus on a lot of the paint chips that we've seen throughout the vehicle as well. Uh, Dan's pretty disappointed that there's couple really bad ones right here on this rear quarter. There's a couple more throughout the car that we need to address. So we'll go through and, and go through our touch-up process there to try to make those look as perfect as we can before we install the film. So I, I don't know if Dan's mentioned this to some of you guys, but there was a big spoiler on the back of this thing at one period of time. It's pretty Really hideous. poor paint job to fix the issue. So what do you mean it was poor? <laughs> <laughs> it was very poor. Uh, we're gonna send that over to Burley's and have them do a uh, refinishing of that. They're probably gonna have to sand it down to bare metal, fill the holes properly, smooth them over, and respray them to a red that actually matches yes. with a clear coat that actually shines. I will have back, I'll have one color again, Rosso Corsa. That's right, not Rosso Dull. Eh. Rosso <laughs> Meh. <laughs> Rosso <laughs> Meh. And I think that's gonna be it. So when Dan gets his car back, it's gonna look amazing. But I think more importantly for him, he's gonna feel a lot more comfortable driving the vehicle and keeping it clean is gonna be so much easier for Dan. And you guys, whenever you see this thing, I think you're gonna be blown away. Yeah, especially if you've seen it before. Yeah, it's gonna look amazing. Oh no, my poor Basoto Rampante needs to come off. Here we go, guys. We're, we're, we're kicking it off with the, uh, with the damage fender. So if you guys didn't know, my car actually got some sort of damage yeah someone did something to this car and oh look at hey 
There's the Scuderia badge. <laughs> but you know what? We're still we're getting this off in one piece. That's not bad. Dude, you can actually see the imprint know, of Scuderia on the, on the sticker. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> That's awesome. It's Look at almost all the glue came. Very, very yeah. little. This fender got damaged. Someone did something to this car and this does not come out. So if you notice, this PPF protected that paint. If I had not had PPF here, I would have had to have this fender repainted, which would have been very, very expensive. So right there, that probably saved my ass already. Factor in how much damage has happened to the front of this car would have absolutely caused this car to need to be repainted completely in the front end and even behind the wheels you can see these wheels have ppf right there so there's ppf all over here and it's just it's dirty but there's paint versus when you come back here these were not ppf'd and look at that the paint is just gone literally no paint left it's just gone heating up the ppf to get the old stuff off and praying to the gods that the paint does not come with it we don't have any experience with that do we none, none. no oh, no no not, it never happened Ooh. Never happens with Ferrari. Film is really clear like this. It's usually in really good shape and yeah. it's a good time to remove it. If it's cloudy, yellow, yellow, got the last stuff on it. mine was yellow as Whoa. hell. It, it gets nice. really scary at that point. And it was brittle. Like this looks like it actually like yeah, still pliable. Got a lot of yeah. Pliability to it. So this is probably Sun Tech. That's my guess is what's on here. Maybe it's not that old. I mean, he tracked it, right? So yeah. This car is definitely tracked. Yeah. He replaces it every couple of years or something like that i mean dude dude had bank yeah <laughs> from what we know he had bank yeah Whoop. comes right off look at that it's like magic it's cool it's like a racer uh it's red again <laughs> it's actually the paint is in great shape yeah it's not too much show mark no there's some, but it's not bad. Wow, you can see all the damage on this side of it. Yeah, yeah there's all this like black stuff on it. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is in perfect condition. Amazing. So this would have had to been repainted for sure if we wouldn't have had a PPF on it. So right there, it pretty much saved the cost of this PPF job. Like I mean, that lens looks beautiful in here. I know, it's really perfect. Glassy and clean. Oh, it's a hole in it. Damn. It's a little damage right there, but... Some of that's it, adhesive, though. Oh, is it? Oh, you're right. Just a little bit of damage, not much. Imagine how much damage that would have been without that. Yeah, it would have been a... That would have been a new lens, probably. It could have cracked it. Certainly would have put a bigger chunk than that in it, but... Even all those marring that was up right, uh, right here, nothing. There's one tiny little pit right there. Yeah, we definitely have some some battle wounds from probably a garage door or a garage is my guess. Yeah. Eventually. Good morning, YouTube. We are back at Brad's shop at Authentic Details and we're continuing on with the Project 458 restoration. It's been about a week since the last cut. We're gonna show you some of the differences that what they're doing makes on the look of this car. It is, it's amazing. <laughs> Already the car is looking so much better, it's crazy. So yes, in case you're wondering, this video is sponsored by Authentic Details. They are hooking me up with some PPF stuff, the ceramic cutting, all this sort of stuff. I'm actually still paying for them to do so many services because I believe in what they're doing so much. So yes, they are sponsoring it, but I'm having them do way more than what is actually like reasonable for them to sponsor for a video. So I said, you know what, this is worth it to me. They do such a good job. I'm willing to pay for them to continue doing the full thing. So yeah, we're kind of doing everything you could ever imagine to restore this car to its brand new glory. And then we're gonna kind of seal it in so that everything remains in good shape for a long time. So that's the problem is I'm not exactly easy on my cars. I drive them a lot. <laughs> got you guys at 106. Don't think I was going to 106. Yes, sir. 
Yeah, you're all in a line. Having all this work done means for many years, I'm gonna be able to enjoy this car and not worry about it looking like crap. So if you're interested in having Authentic Details do any work for you, go visit AuthenticDetails.com, mention my channel, and they're gonna hook you up with 10% off any of their services. So all the stuff you're seeing that they're doing to my car, they're hooking you guys up. Gotta do that, they are the best. There's just simply no one else I'm gonna trust with my car. So they've been prepping the car, they got the badges removed. We still have to get the paint chip Fixed. That is the only paint chip that happened on the entire car because of the PPF that was on it. So that is why you need to have a PPF. As you can see, this has not been paint corrected and it's in pretty terrible shape. <laughs> lots of stuff, lots of scratches. And then down here, they have paint corrected it. So if we look, I can't see anything. It's just red, just a red blob. <laughs> it's almost impossible to, let's see if that light, I mean, you can't see any swirl marks. Look at that, getting the light to reflect, there's nothing. It's just perfectly smooth, perfectly smooth. And believe it or not, you can actually paint correct other materials. So not just paint, they are doing my carbon fiber. So the carbon fiber intake on this, so you can see how much, oh yeah, how bad that is. And now if we go up here, they paint corrected it. And look at that. It's perfect. So that, They've already done, so obviously we gotta do the rest of it. And then we're actually gonna do the head or the tail lights right now. And he's even restoring my seats. You think, oh, those look they look pretty nice. They look red. But then uh so <laughs> so you can see this has not been cleaned, this has been cleaned. That's the color of my seats that they're actually supposed to be. Clearly, I have a dirty ass and my car needs some love so it looks pretty terrible i'm i'm almost ashamed because i thought these seats oh like i'm like they're pretty clean they're clean seats and then i see that brad sent me a picture of that earlier in the week and i was like oh my god it's terrible all the sort of stuff that we're going to do to this car to make it look absolutely perfect so interesting enough brad was saying how leather over time naturally absorbs like oils and grease and whatever off your body and so you can see this is what the leather is actually supposed to look like. That's what it looks like from the factory. And then over time, it starts to become all shiny like that. So that has not been cleaned yet. Human debris soaked into my seat. Kind of gross to think about. Huge difference. Look how shiny and glossy the unfixed side is versus the corrected side. So we're gonna get these seats looking absolutely beautiful like they are from the factory. Making money, doing deals. <laughs> oh yeah, we got some... Uh, yeah some other toys here in the shop. So Dan, we talked a lot about clear coat systems on cars and how it's important to be in the mode of preservation when you're thinking about paint correction. And this is the one of the things that we see pretty often in the detailing world, the paint correction world. Specialists will get a little overzealous. They'll get so focused on removing a defect that they're going to cut down the clear to get this defect out and make the paint look perfect. That's where problems start to happen. We start cutting that clear coat down, we're reducing the life of your paint system. So you had a, a pretty deep what we call a rid, which is a random isolated deep scratch on the top of your car. We paint corrected the whole thing and it was our decision to not cut that out because we want to preserve the clear coat on your vehicle. We also know we're putting film on top of it. So even more of a reason why to just preserve the existing clear coat system that's there. Whenever you think about getting a brand new car, I would always recommend doing PPF on the whole car if you really care quite a bit about it because things like that scratch that we just looked at on the roof would not happen. But if you're past the point of having a new vehicle and you do want to get it looking as perfect as possible like we're doing with Dan's car just lock it in with the PPF that's always a great option that would be your your best form of protection for your vehicle all right Brad what are we doing now all right so I wanted to come up with a really simple way to demo to everybody what the paint system on your car is like a lot of you may already know this but I know there's a lot of people that don't know this I know a lot of my customers don't so I wanted to educate you guys on just a way to think about your clear coat. And the reason I wanna do this is because I want you to see just how delicate the top coat on your car really is. So when you're considering getting paint correction to get some of these scratches that you would love to see go away, uh, I want you to understand it's probably smarter not to get them all the way out because you're actually going to reduce the life of your paint system on your vehicle. So let's imagine I've got different color pieces of paper here because I want to be able to demo to you guys and I'm trying to kind of keep it as close to Dan's Ferrari as possible. So <laughs> yes. black, this is our, our body panel obviously much thicker than this but let's use this for example most paint systems which you saw in uh, dance videos you're looking at about six mils to seven mils usually when they're resprayed you could see all the way up to 30 mils i think this car had 25 on it somewhere didn't it Dan? yeah some spots so that doesn't mean that you have 25 mils of paint to work through you still have one mil of clear coat 
on your, your paint system. What you want to be aware of is that when you're paint correcting the paint, reducing the clear coat is the only way to get those scratches out. So we have your body panel. Primer on these cars is usually white. Primer coat here, that's usually about a mil thick. Your color coat, which is usually about a mil thick. And for sake of demonstration, I have two sheets of clear paper here, but really this is how thick your clear coat is. It is about as thick as a piece of paper. This is all we have to work with when we're thinking about getting scratches out of your car. And to be fair, that's actually thicker. This is actually thicker than what your clear coat would be, but you see how thin that is. That is basically a sheet of paper. Yep. That's what we're working with. So for sake of demonstration, I'm gonna show, I'm gonna use two sheets and pretend it's one, okay? So whenever I get scratches on my clear coat, Oh. Right, this happens from washing or drying without a drying aid or drying my car. Or, man, the worst is when you see somebody like, oh, I've got something on my paint and they rub on it like this. That's what happens to your clear coat when you do that. Anything that you have between the surface touching the paint and the clear coat, Ugh. dirt ro is, is basically tiny pieces of rocks that are really, really small. That's what's gonna create scratches like this on your paint. So washing is really important. So if I'm gonna go through and remove all these scratches with a polisher, essentially what I'm doing is I am cutting your clear coat in half. Now clear coats are only designed to last a certain amount of years in their lifespan. If I cut that in half, I've immediately cut the lifespan of your clear coat in half. So it's very important to consider preservation before perfection when you start thinking about paint correction. So you want to ask your paint correction specialist the way that they want to approach the vehicle. And you want to hear things like, hey, this scratch is a little too deep. I'd prefer not to get that scratch all the way out so that we don't sacrifice your clear coat for perfection. The other thing we talked a lot about is ceramic coating your paint. That usually adds a little bit of film build. None of them are gonna add a full thickness of a clear coat unless you're putting 10 to 12 layers on the paint. PPF is gonna add an additional eight mils of protection some of them 11.5 mils, which we're putting on Dan's car, on top of your clear coat. So that's gonna give you your best form of protection. Make sure, again, that you're, you're, whoever's polishing on your car is focused on preservation before perfection. We're gonna take a look at micro scratches there are in this, the wee little polisher. It is. If I had a big one, my bigger ones would actually start hitting the paint. Yeah, yeah. So we want to try to stay away from that. So I'll, I'll kind of move it in here. I may need to bring this one out. It's even, even smaller. smaller. Aww. So it's got different pad sizes. It's so cute. Alright, see how rich it looks. Now, this is just the first step. Whoa. You see how it kind of just clears up the lens? Yeah. And gives it that rich. It's kind hard of... to even find a scratch on it now. Wow. Isn't that crazy? That's intense. That, make, that makes a huge difference. Huge. It's crazy. So now I'll um, kind of do the, the polish side of it. So this stuff's the 210? The 210. All right. Like I said, everybody uses different kinds of polishes. Even my guys use different polishes and compounds that, that they like. Yeah. This is just one I've been trained on that I enjoy the most. So. It's funny, man. When I was younger, I used to get like my Hot Wheels when I got old. <laughs> and they would start looking all crappy. You I, I take colors. them apart and like sand them all down and smooth them, polish them out and respray them. Did you really? Oh yeah. Uh, you... I, I always liked like restoring things and making it look brand new again. Well, you're you're restoring my car yeah. basically. <laughs> that, this stuff just gets me excited. I mean, now look at it. Oh my now god! You can really see the clarity in the plastic. There is like no scratches. I mean, this is what it looks like when it, when you. Yeah, yeah, when that's brand new. Your previous owner first bought it, that's what it looks like. Yeah, when it came out of the factory floor. Wow. So just for reference, let's go back. To yeah, yeah, we'll look at this one, which isn't done yet. Oh, this looks so lame. Yeah. yeah. And then back over to the other one. It's oh. <laughs> so crazy. Yeah, I can't get an angle that actually shows any scratches. To me, it's like all these little details across the whole car, they all add up. When someone sees a car, they may go, wow, this car is in really good shape. I mean, you can even see the, the color difference between that light and that light. This one ha looks like a deeper red than that light. Well, when it I is. zoomed in on the, on the camera, it really looks different. Yeah. 
It's That's crazy. So to me, it's, you do all this stuff all over the entire car, and now you've got a pretty much like a brand new car again. Yeah. It's just you know surface stuff, but it makes a huge difference. My car looks like it's been very well cared for, still looks brand new, and. I mean, how much more would a Ferrari that's got that all this done to it be worth versus one that's not? I would say you could probably add ten to fifteen thousand dollars in value in, on the market if you put two side by side. Yeah, yeah. Had then, them priced different when... ways. A buyer would walk up to one and say, "Okay, well, I can see why this one is ten thousand dollars more." So I know we do a ton of DIY stuff and you're probably wondering why is it that I'm having them do it instead of doing this myself. So if you didn't know, I tried doing a PPF before. I did a terrible job. It came out like shit. And I've done some polishing myself or paint correction and it still doesn't look great. I would say I did like a, like maybe a D plus. And so these guys are doing this every day. That's their job. That's all they do. And they, some of them even have been to training classes for this. I hate to say it, but they're just gonna do a better job than you are. It's gonna come out a lot better. This is one of those things that's a specific skill and I think it's worth it to pay for professionals to do it. There's a lot of things that, you know, when it's like bolts go in, bolts come out kind of thing. Some of it's difficult, like not trying to diminish the skills that of a good mechanic. But this is like a almost artistic skill that they have that they, they hone over many years. So unless you're doing this all the time, I can almost guarantee they're gonna do a better job. A few moments later. The worst part about having all this work done on my car is I don't get to drive my car for like two or three weeks. I'm having withdrawals. I mean, the Corvette's doing a pretty good job of at least keeping me entertained and I have to say, at least I had a backup sports car to deal with for now. But I'm like, man, I miss my car. So hopefully you're finding this a little bit educational and certainly you need to find a really trustworthy place like Authentic Details if you're not gonna send your car there. So ask the right questions, really see examples of the work. Make sure that you trust these guys and that they really know what they're doing. There's some really good shops out there. So I'm not saying like your only choice is Authentic Details. That's not true. But Authentic Details is really the caliber of thing that you want if you're gonna be spending this kind of money. So these services aren't cheap. I'll give you a hint. If you're having your car PPF, and it's probably under four thousand dollars like the whole thing yeah they're not gonna do a good job there's no way to make money on that like they they have to cut corners by doing it fast and doing it poorly so these sorts of things cost a lot of money and just anticipate that to, to ppf the car is a lot of money you can ppf just the front of the car for a lot cheaper and honestly at a minimum that's what you need to do just get the front clip done get the side view mirrors done and maybe any high impact areas like behind the rear wheels ppfing the whole car isn't necessarily something you have to do i'm doing it because i'm driving my car a lot and at this point, I love that car so much. I want it to be in perfect shape, especially after they're gonna do all this stuff. So they're gonna be paint correcting it, ceramic coating it. You might as well lock in all of that stuff, make it so it's just in perfect shape, perfect condition for a long, long period of time. That's my tip to you guys. Spend the money to have the right place. Do it correctly. Don't cheap out on this sort of stuff. You're gonna regret it. The paint's not gonna be in good shape. You guys are so amazing. Thank you so much for watching. Consider liking this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed it. Share this video if you think it's helpful to others. That clock is being given away as soon as I hit 50,000 subscribers, which should be pretty soon. In order to win, all you have to do is sign up to my email list or buy some merch or become a member of my channel. If you do any of those three things, once I hit 50,000 subscribers, I'm gonna give away that clock to one of you. You're gonna wanna stay tuned for all the cool car stuff we got coming your way. It's gonna be sweet. Thank you.